Thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to be continuing my series about communication. Communication is such a huge issue with families, with people in general. Listening is what I have been talking about and how important it is to listen. Last time I gave you scripture from Proverbs that said that it is so much better to listen, so much better to listen than to speak. In other words, we are to be quick to listen and slow to speak. But too often we are so quick to speak and so slow to listen. And we miss a lot of good things. We miss important things that whoever we're talking to is trying to tell us. And many times arguments come out, break out, miscommunication, anger, frustration, and conflict is just not resolved. And that's a huge issue between a lot of people and a lot of relationships, whether it be at work, whether it be at church, and, um, in your community, and certainly between family members. So I'm continuing my talk on communication. I've been focusing on nonverbal, nonverbal communication. A lot of the nonverbal communication that I've been talking about is body language. We have to be so careful about our body language and what it's saying to people. I know that we don't really think about stuff like that when we're discussing and having conversations with those that we love, but perhaps if we put it into practice, it can become easier. Eye contact is so important. Body posture, you know, showing that you care, making sure that what you're saying is matching with however you are appearing to look. Perception is everything. However a person perceives something, that is their reality. So it helps to be mindful about how we speak, about how we are expressing ourselves through our body language, making sure that it matches what we're saying as best we can. Spatial distance. The last time I talked about listening and, and conversing with people, sometimes it's just an issue for people, you know, there needs to be at least two feet between people when they're talking. At least a foot, but two feet is, is really good. Sometimes people, are, are they feel cramped if you're in their space. And it can really cause there to be a roadblock, so to speak, between the communication that's going on. Facial expression. Facial expression is very important. And like I said, again, I know that sometimes it's just not easy. Most times it's not easy to pay attention to these things when you're talking to people. You're just trying to get whatever it is that you're trying to say out in the open. But these things are very good to just keep in mind, especially if you are really trying to solve some type of conflict and you really want to get it resolved. It's, uh, it just doesn't hurt to be mindful of just the simple things. Be mindful of your hand gestures even. Um, it just is, is so important. It makes a world of difference. Now, um, I'm a social worker. I've said that many times on this show. So I've got a lot of practice with doing these kinds of things. And even in my own personal life, I have to admit, sometimes it's not easy to remember some of the things I'm telling you. But I do know that when you put things like this to practice, it can really make a difference. And the more you do it, the easier it is to do it whenever you have something, especially when it's important that you're trying to get across, especially conflict and conflict resolution. Today I'm going to talk more about verbal communications and making sure that our messages are clear when we're sending them and the types of things that we say how we say it, um, receiving clear messages, you know, when people are talking to us, what can you do to make sure that you hear what they're really trying to say? And then, of course, tone of voice. I've talked about that before and how it's so important that the tone of voice matters as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. And then I'm going to get into some roadblocks to what I call effective communication. 
and this is with anyone. So let's talk about clear communication, words that we speak. We have to be mindful. I think the whole point of all of this is trying to be mindful, trying to keep in mind the things that we say, how we say it, the tone of voice, our body language. The whole idea is being mindful, keeping in mind how you may be coming across this is a suggestion that I have told many people, especially when they want to come and talk to somebody or go and talk to somebody about something. I tell them to, to do a little trial run. Uh, if there's something they really need to resolve, I tell them, I said, well, you know what? First off, pray about it. Pray about what it is that you're really trying to get resolved in terms of, you know, when is a good time, which is also... Uh, it could be a robot to effective communication, it's timing. And then once you do that, you know, I'm a firm believer that whatever we ask the Lord for, He will give it to us. Even as simple as things to say, what to say, how to say it. Because it makes a big difference. I'll give you an example. You know, say for instance, if, um, if you're at work, and you have a supervisor that you need to talk to. There's some things that are going on and you don't understand why your supervisor is maybe seem to be pointing you out all the time and that's a problem. Well, I suggest, you know, that you first spend some time with the Lord and the Lord knows your issue with your supervisor. He will give you the words that you need to speak and then even on your way to work, practice. Some of the things that you hear, that you sense that the Lord is telling you some things that you can say that can truly come across and get over to your supervisor to truly resolve this issue of them pointing you out. It could be that, here again, it's perception. There's something that your supervisor is communicating to you that makes you feel like you're being pointed out. So the conflict is there because you don't like it and you want to resolve it. You want to talk to them about it and say, you know, listen, I, I, I really want to talk to you about how I'm perceiving something. Sometimes it's good to just come at it with, I'm getting the feeling that, and I could be wrong, but I want to have an opportunity to talk to you about how I am um, getting this feeling that it seems like I'm pointed out, like I'm singled out, and I could be wrong. Be humble when you approach the person and, and tell them, this is what I am getting. Be careful not to say, you keep pointing me out. You are doing this to me, and I don't appreciate it. In other words, you may have heard things like this before. Somebody talked to you about I messages and you messages. You, we tend to get, um, we get, when we get upset, we have a tendency to say, you did this and you did that, and, and you are always doing this. Well, if you approach somebody like that, uh, imagine, first off, how you would feel or how you may react if somebody comes to you in a tone of, you know, you did this and you did that and you are always doing that. If you come at a person like that from the beginning, especially, and to tell you the truth, even throughout the conversation, if you have a lot of you this and you that, you're going to shut down the, uh, the possibility of the conflict actually being resolved. So the best way to start off uh, a conversation with a supervisor or anybody, to be honest with you, I just use that example of a supervisor because most people can relate to that. But even in just your at home, you know, uh, between family members, start off with, I get the feeling that, or I am wondering if, I could be wrong, but, and don't follow up your but with, but I don't think so. <laughs> You're going to shut it down. Be humble about it. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. You know, too often we, we are so focused on getting you know, whatever it is we want resolved and how it's making us feel. We're angry, we're frustrated, 
and, and we come across we, with that full emotion, and it's full emotion right out of the gate. And by doing that, well, you're going to get a defense. People are going to put up their fence. If you come at somebody in a way that is uh, aggressive, like, or, um, you know, accusatory, uh, people immediately put up their defenses. So if you want to get the solution or the, the conflict resolved, the best way is to come at it more in a humble way, uh, a strategic way. And that's what I meant on uh, another show that I did when I was talking about listening in terms of the fact that you have to be mindful of um, how you would want somebody to come at you if they had a situation. If, 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 if we would only put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, you know, the, it, the Bible tells us, treat, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That prayer time that I was talking about on the previous show, that prayer time that you can get when you're talking with the Lord, that time with Him gives you not only the answers that you need in terms of how to come at a person, what to say, when to say it, but you see that prayer time with the Lord also gives you an opportunity to calm yourself, um, to for the Holy Spirit to calm you. And by doing that, when you get ready to approach a person about something that's really bothering you and you really need to get it resolved, then you'll be at a better place mentally and emotionally and spiritually to be able to get that, that conflict resolved. So I, I hope that that makes sense. I hope that um, uh, you will uh, consider doing that because the Bible tells us that when we are quick to speak um, and without getting the full picture, um, we're, we're the ones that come out to be shamed. Uh, we're the ones that come out basically looking like, well, you know what? And, uh, you know, we just kind of look uh, like an idiot sometimes. And we're, we don't mean to, but we can come across that way. And then, you know, what what has been resolved? Nothing. So it, it really is a, 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 a wise thing to do is to spend some time with the Lord to quiet yourself, number one, and to get the answers uh, as to when to approach the person, how to approach the person, and, and, and what to say. It really does help. I'm a living witness that when you do that, it really does make a difference.